Whole life insurance can be a great financial tool uh, for death benefit if you want to maximize what you leave behind at the end of the day when you die. But in this educational episode, uh, I'm going to challenge uh, if a whole life agent touts whole life insurance as a retirement planning vehicle superior to IUL, uh, I would challenge them to create an illustration showing income out to age 120, uh, the maximum you can take without it imploding or crashing and burning as we call it in the industry. So listen, I'm going to share with you what you can do better than relying on whole life insurance for retirement income. So I'm Doug Andrew, and I've been helping people optimize assets and minimize taxes now for uh, nearly five decades. I started in 1974. And uh, back then, actually, I was a big buy term, invest the difference proponent until 1980, uh, because uh, prior to 1980, there was really only two types of life insurance policies available, if you keep it simple. Uh, term insurance or whole life insurance. And up until that point, um, I could prove that if you were disciplined and you bought term insurance and actually invested the difference. Now, a lot of buy term invest the difference proponents never do discipline or, or, or get their clients to invest the difference. So uh, they're probably not going to be better off. But we actually had a product where every uh, dollar they set aside only uh, one third of the dollar went into a term to 65 life insurance policy. And the, uh, the other two thirds went into either an annuity earning between seven and a half to eight and a half percent. But back then interest rates were high. And so our clients uh, would uh, spend that money over to a mutual fund of their choice uh, and utilized dollar cost averaging. And so they were diversified in a mutual fund of their choice. And we were hoping that they would earn an average of 12%. Many of our clients did, but uh, that required a lot of uh, management intensive timing of the market, which is always tough to do. Uh, but then we realized, or actually EF Hutton realized, uh, they weren't really an insurance company, they were a brokerage firm, that even if you could earn 12% average in the market, uh, you're not gonna net 12% at the end of the day. In a tax-deferred IRA or 401k, a lot of Americans are in a 33% tax bracket uh, if they accumulate any type of a respectable retirement nest egg. So even if you had a million dollar nest egg, and even if you could earn 12%, and you pulled out 120,000 a year, uh, you have to pay a, a third of that 40,000 in tax, you're only netting 80,000 or 8% after tax. A lot of asset managers charge 1% in uh, asset management fees on that million dollar portfolio. If you subtract the fees uh, in addition to the taxes, you're only netting 70,000 to buy gas and groceries and prescriptions and golf green fees out of the 120,000 you withdrew. That's only 7%. Uh, EF Hutton is credited with being the brainchild behind the emergence of universal life in 1980. And all they thought up was, hey, Instead of uh, using life insurance primarily for death benefit, let's use it for living benefits. Let's take the least amount of insurance the IRS will let us get away with, and let's put in the, the most money, the most premium the IRS allows, and uh, people will be able to earn um, 11% and net 10. In fact, on universal life in 1980, clear until 1990, I never got credited less than 11 and three quarters percent on my universal life. Some years as high as 15 and a half percent. Let's just round it down to 11. If I earned 11, I netted 10. I had clients who put in $500,000 into a universal life policy in one fell swoop, and they immediately were realizing a net internal rate of return of 10% tax-free. They started withdrawing $50,000 a year of tax-free income. And frankly, they've been able to do that ever since. Now, uh, long story short, uh, the IRS came in and challenged it. Uh, EF Hutton wasn't doing anything wrong, but 
uh, the IRS went to Congress and uh, said, we've got, to, we've got to change the definition of tax-free uh, accumulation inside of life insurance under section 72E, 7702, and 101A. Those three sections, okay, uh, mean that your money can accumulate tax-free inside of an insurance policy under section 72E, the interest dividends or whatever. Section 7702 uh, give the parameters, the guidelines to access money or turn on income out of a life insurance policy, uh, totally income tax-free. Section 101A says at the end of the day, any of the cash value left in that permanent policy uh, will uh, blossom, increase in value and transfer out income tax-free uh, in the form of a death benefit. So let's get back to the beginning of, of what I was saying when I started this educational episode. So uh, many times um, when I go out and I talk about the merits of Max Funded Indexed Universal Life, it's because Universal Life uh, was originally designed to be primarily used for living benefits, to accumulate money at the best internal rate of return, uh, to earn 11 and net 10, let's say. And at the end of the day, when you're ready to retire, if, if you have a million dollar nest egg and it's earning 11 and netting 10, uh, you can take out 10%, 100 grand a year of tax-free income uh, without depleting your million dollar nest egg if you live to be 120. And we've actually been able to do that for many, many clients. Well, so after 1980, there were three types of insurance term. Uh, there was whole life, and then there's this universal life. Well, universal life uh, can be designed uh, to take the least amount of insurance. You actually uh, self-insure in as little as 15 years. Uh, whereas whole life was uh, primarily built on a chassis for death benefit. It has guarantees in it. And of course, whole life agents tout those guarantees. Well, whole life will, will uh, be guaranteed to stay in force. Well, yeah, the death benefit will stay there if you live to be 120. But <clears throat> you ask a whole life agent, well, you're touting this whole life policy as a vehicle that you can uh, get some tax-free income out of it. So create an illustration out of your whole life policy is what I challenge them to do. Create an illustration showing the maximum amount I can take out of this whole life policy in tax-free income starting at age 65, let's say, all the way to age 120, what is the maximum amount I can pull out so that it's guaranteed not to lapse by age 120? And uh, they can't do it. They can do it, but it's embarrassing because uh, they can usually only pull out four or five or 6% payouts. A million dollars of cash value would be lucky to give you 40, 50 or $60,000 of income. And so then the only uh, uh, rebuttal they can give is, well, your IUL is illustrated at 10%, at but uh, you don't have guarantees. Well, let's think about it, okay? When I have clients who put in $500,000 into an IUL policy at age 60, and uh, of course they have to spread it out over five years, but let's say they get $500,000 in, uh, they could buy a ton of life insurance for $500,000, but that's not the objective. Uh, they can get away with only $1 million of death benefit. And so uh, you put in $500,000 in the first five years into an IUL policy, and the life insurance death benefit is only a million. Well, uh, under the uh, uh, level death benefit option, which is what you would choose if you wanna have the cost of insurance get cheaper as you get older, your $500,000, if it's earning, let's say 9.6% uh, net, which many of my, my clients have realized, that 500,000 will double to a million of cash value in seven and a half years. So if they're into this IUL policy, the first five years funding it, and then seven and a half years later, that half million of cash value is now worth a million, that's in 12 and a half years. Most of my clients, their cash value uh, equals or exceeds the original death benefit by the 15th year. So the insurance company is only charging you uh, for the net amount at risk. 
So after five years, if you've got 500,000 of cash value and the original death benefit's a million, if you die, yeah, there's only a million paid out. Uh, it's one heck of a return still, 500,000 blossoms to a million, but you did it for living benefits. The insurance company is only charging you for the remaining $500,000 at risk because if you die, uh, your beneficiaries get a million, but 500,000 of it was your own money. It was your cash value. The insurance company is only charging you for the remaining 500,000. Are you getting it? So seven and a half years later, when your 500,000 of cash value in your IUL it has grown now to a million and the original death benefit was only a million, you're self-insured. Okay, that's like buy term invest the difference on steroids. Uh, the cost of insurance is zero, but see the Tefra Defra uh, tax citations say, well, with Universal Life, the death benefit now has to grow with the cash value because in another seven and a half years, if you don't start taking out income, a million of cash value will grow to two million of cash value. Well, the death benefit now grows with your cash value and has to stay ahead of it about five percentage points. So in this example, in another seven and a half years, let's say in the 22nd and a half years, if you have 2 million of cash value in an IUL policy and you died, uh, your beneficiaries would receive 2.1 million, uh, 100,000 or 5% more than the 2 million. But see, the insurance company is only charging you for the actual uh, cost of 100,000 at risk. Now, the actual cost, even though you're older on 100,000, is minuscule compared to the interest you're earning on $2 million. That's why a property structured IUL policy gets cheaper as you get older. Have you ever seen an insurance policy that gets cheaper as you get older? You haven't seen one structured correctly. So what am I saying? If a whole life insurance agent says, oh, well, a whole life has guarantees. Well, guarantees of what? That the death benefit, um, will not um, uh, go away or lapse uh, out to age 120. Well, <laughs> indexed universal life, the cash value equals and exceeds that death benefit, usually within 15 years, you're, you're self-insured. Why do I need guarantees that the million dollar original death benefit will never lapse when my policy has over a million dollars of cash in it? And whenever I die, it's going to transfer out tax-free under section 101A of the Internal Revenue Code. Why do I need guarantees when already my cash value exceeds the original death benefit? And it, it's unbelievable how many whole life agents don't understand this. So I just say, okay, if you think those guarantees are so important, um, let me see what those guarantees are costing people in retirement income. Run an illustration. Uh, with a whole life policy starting out at age 65 or 70 and show me the maximum amount they can pull out so that the policy doesn't lapse with those guarantees uh, to age 120. And they don't like to do it because uh, they can only get maybe four or five or 6% payout on a million, only 40 or 50,000 of income. Whereas a maximum funded indexed uh, insurance policy uh, Universal Life can generate double that in retirement income tax-free. These are things that uh, many whole life agents are never taught. And I don't know if they even want to know it. Otherwise, those who do understand this, uh, they usually come over and start selling IUL. And they uh, admit that they didn't know what they didn't know. So folks, if uh, this is um, arousing curiosity with you and you want to understand IUL better, here's what I would recommend. Um, I want to gift you a copy of this book. It's actually two books in one. This side is about 200 pages and it has all the charts and graphs uh, and it explains uh, with the right, excuse me, the left brain learner, uh, how uh, to properly structure IUL to perform as a superior capital accumulation tool and as a retirement planning vehicle that will generate six, seven, eight, nine, ten percent payouts without depleting uh, if you live to be 120. And uh, this is again two books in one because this is for the left brain learner. But if you learn by stories, you flip it over to this side. And this is about 100 pages with 62 actual client stories. 
real life people who have used this uh, not only for retirement, but all kinds of financial goals. Now, here's how you claim your free copy because you can go to Amazon and pay 20 bucks. I wanna gift you a copy. This is not about me selling you a book. This is about you and your brighter future. So how do you claim your free copy? Simply go to LaserFund, L-A-S-E-R fund.com or click on the link below. You contribute a nominal amount towards the shipping and handling. I'll cover the rest of that cost and I'll fire out a hard copy to you via priority mail. There's also options there. If you wanna listen and learn, watch and learn, check out the educational webinars that we teach on a regular basis. There's no charge for those, those are free. You can even schedule an appointment with an IUL specialist to see how a properly structured maximum funded IUL can perform in your particular set of circumstances. But you will end up knowing more than 99% of insurance agents about how to optimize your insurance contract to generate tax-free income for as long as you live. Don't miss out. This is about your brighter future. Thank you.